This week on the West Block, a high stakes game of chicken on Parliament Hill avoids a snap election. He has not consulted Dr. Tam or experts ahead of threatening a general election in the second wave of a pandemic. The choice is up to the opposition parties, Mr. Speaker. Donald Trump's former national security advisor on the U.S. election and the biggest security threat facing Canada. I think China poses the biggest existential threat to the West as a whole in the 21st century. And what the Trudeau government is doing for vulnerable seniors in COVID-19. Are you concerned about seniors' mental health? Absolutely. I'm Mercedes Stevenson, and this is the West Block. Well, the Liberal government survived another self-inflicted confidence vote last week, avoiding a snap election. It all came down to the We Charity controversy, with the Conservatives in the Block pushing for a so-called anti-corruption committee to probe into government spending. The Liberals fired back, though, saying that the motion dripped of non-confidence in the government and brought it to a confidence vote. The NDP found themselves once again propping up the Liberals and shutting down the motion. Everyone says they don't want an election, and yet here we are. Joining me now to unpack all of this and what it means is conservative strategist Melissa Lansman. We are also joined by Robin McLaughlin, an NDP strategist, and Richard Mahoney, liberal strategist. Thanks for coming on, guys. What a crazy week uh, on Parliament Hill. We've seen confidence votes before in minority governments. I've never seen one over the creation of a committee. Richard, everyone says they don't want an election, and yet here we are playing chicken with the prospect of an election. Why did the Liberal government do this? A really good question, because folks watching at home are probably thinking, an election? What election? Why are we having an election? So I think a couple things are going on. One, the government was focused on COVID exclusively until towards the end of June, uh, when they realized the CERB, which they had rolled out very quickly, and, you know, to eight or nine million Canadians, didn't cover students. So they unveil a program uh, to cover students. They proposed to outsource it to WE. Within a week, they reversed that decision and canceled the program. And then we have a series of uh, uh, parliamentary committees over the summer looking into that and how it happened, all the mechanics of it. The prime minister testified, everybody testified. Um, and so, of course, the opposition wants to go more into that. So in the end, I think the prime minister was sort of signaling he's not going to let the opposition parties which they can do in a minority parliament, totally run the table on him and decide what it is that they will investigate and what they won't investigate and what it is that parliament will spend its time on and won't. Uh, it's, it's pretty counter-brand from how the Liberals had sold themselves with transparency and accountability, although I guess there's accountability in, in trying to trigger a vote. Melissa, do you think this becomes the new tactic, that whenever the government is confronted with scrutiny they don't want, they will threaten to go to an election and try to twist the NDP's arm into keeping them in power? Well, I, I think only the beginnings of what you saw. I think this was very much a trial balloon for the Liberals who claim they didn't want an election. But, uh, you know, I, I think there's a reason to believe uh, without, you know, and, and put the NDP, frankly, on their back foot uh, uh, in, in supporting them. So effectively running a, uh, a majority. But to frame this as a game or chicken or parliamentary antics, I think is where uh, is where actually everybody is wrong. I think there's a serious issue here that the government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars throughout this pandemic. There hasn't been a budget. There hasn't been the ability to scrutinize uh, that spending through uh, through Parliament. Uh, you know what Richard forgot to say is that they actually prorogued this to stop investigating the wee scandal, brought it back, saying we will be accountable and then, you know, call a confidence motion on something that we've never had a confidence motion on, or at least not in the last uh, 150 years. <laughs> Robin, where does this leave the NDP? Because they back the government saying it's too dangerous to have an election, despite the fact the United States is having an election, three different provinces are having elections. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're not polling well, so I can understand not wanting the government to fall. But how long can they balance that between holding on to some influence and some power and just becoming essentially the people who are propping the government up? Well, I'd say the NDP had Canadians' backs. 
Canadians don't want election. They're, they're quite scared. They know they're mostly in a second wave across Canada, uh, and they're worried that the government may not be there when they need them. So Melissa's right that this is a serious issue. The problem for the Conservatives and the Liberals was they didn't take a serious approach. Uh, the Conservatives overplayed their hand by trying to label this an anti-corruption committee, rather than trying to get a committee that could hold the government to account, because Liberals were filibustering. They were stonewalling. They, they were deliberately trying to ensure the opposition couldn't get the answers they wanted to hold the government to account. So thank goodness there was an adult in the room in Jagmeet Singh and the NDP, uh, and he voted to make Parliament work, because that's what Canadians want. Richard, do you believe that the Liberals do want an election? It sure seems like they're trying to provoke one with three confidence votes back to back. Um, no, I don't think so. But I do think the other side of that is I do think they're probably ready to fight one if they have to. Um, I think they understand. I think all the parties understand that Canadians would be wary about an election right now. But as you said in your in a previous question, uh, other elections are going on. The American election are, are, is going on. BC is having one. New Brunswick just had one. So if we have to have one, we, I think the Liberals are prepared to it. I don't think they want one. Just have a few moments left, so I want to go quickly to Melissa and to Robin. Do you foresee us getting through the rest of 2020 without an election? Uh, it doesn't. It certainly doesn't look like that. I think the uh, the Liberals uh, see see this as an opportunity to uh, uh, to frankly go out to the electorate. They saw. Uh, they saw a majority government, a majority incumbent uh, in in uh, in New Brunswick. Uh, we are probably seeing uh, a majority government for Mr. Horgan in uh, in BC, and uh, the cards are still aligned for them. Where we haven't had the economic fallout that I think we're going to have uh, in the next six to eight months, so why not go to that electorate now? It's a wise calculation. But to say that you don't want one uh, and consistently call for uh, for confidence, I, I mean, soon we'll be having confidence motions around question period until we just go to election. Robin? I sure hope we can, and there's really no reason that we can't get through this year and, uh, to be frank, through to the budget, because that's what the NDP's got their eyes on, is the budget. I mean, that's what matters. The throne speech was ambitious. Talked about pharmacare, childcare, protecting the most vulnerable among us. And the budget is where we're going to be able to do that. So we, sh we should be able to see Parliament work. But what we saw this past week uh, is concerning because it kind of casts a shadow over this Parliament. It's like a poison pill into this Parliament. How do you negotiate in good faith with a government you know doesn't want to be here and doesn't like this parliament. Okay, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, Mr. Thanks a lot. Up next, insider details on Donald Trump's White House. My interview with the former White House National Security Advisor, John Bolton.